Hello. Today's video will be in defense of nonfiction. I think nonfiction gets a bad rap. This video is for people that think that nonfiction is boring, that it's dry and tedious and not fun to read. Interestingly, I know a lot of people on the other end of the spectrum who are like, why would you read anything but nonfiction? And I think both extremes are dumb. I'm going to be recommending some of my favorite nonfiction books, but not only that, these are all books that I think are really good for people who don't read a lot of nonfiction. Let's get into it. The first book that I have is Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is a memoir. I think memoirs are a really good place to start if you don't read a ton of nonfiction. Generally speaking, they tend to be less like hammering in facts and statistics. This memoir is one that I love because it is so literary. It's just gorgeously written. This is about Gay's life, about her experience in the world as a fat woman. It is about dealing with trauma. She was sexually assaulted at the age of 12. So there's a lot of very heavy stuff in here, but Gay is such a phenomenal writer and just such a brilliant woman. And obviously this is coming from her own personal experiences. It's just such an incredible reading experience. Another reason that I'm including it is because just the way that it's written, oh, there's a bookmark in here. The other reason I think this could be a good place to start for nonfiction is because the chapters themselves are very short, the vast majority of them. There might be one or two longer ones, but some chapters are only like a paragraph long. So if you find nonfiction intimidating because it's like walls of text with no paragraph breaks, I think this book is a good place to start. And also it's gorgeous and a very important read. And I just, I love it a lot. Next, I have Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. This is the kind of nonfiction that I would recommend to people who like mysteries and thrillers and things like that. It has some elements of like espionage kind of stuff, corporate espionage. It has the trappings of a thriller, except it's nonfiction. This is about the Silicon Valley startup Theranos, which claimed to have technology that was able to very accurately and real time test a myriad of different things from a single drop of your blood, which then got tweaked slowly over time. And eventually, Carrie Rao was the reporter with the Wall Street Journal who broke the story that Theranos was not what they claimed to be. And it is fascinating. The CEO and founder of Theranos, Elizabeth Holmes, is such a character, so eccentric and ridiculous, honestly, that if this was not nonfiction, you would have an editor being like, no, 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 you gotta cut it. The part about where she fakes having a deep voice to come across as more authoritative, that's ridiculous, cut that out. Except it's real life and it's in here. What on earth? It is so good. I feel like this is kind of making the rounds on booktube. A lot of people who mostly read fiction have picked this up and really enjoyed this. I read the physical book and it was just, fabulous. But I do know for some people, nonfiction on an audiobook can be easier than reading it in a physical book. So a little tip for you. I love this. Can't recommend it enough. Next, I have The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby. This is another memoir and it is super, super short. Like Hunger, it's very heavy memoir. Bobby is the former editor of French Elle magazine and he had a massive stroke that left him completely paralyzed except for I think one eye that he's able to blink. He wrote this book by dictating via eyelid blinks. He explains the system, but basically he would communicate the letter he wanted to use and then eventually get to words and sentences and then a whole book. And it is gorgeous and heartbreaking and I love it so, so very much. Again, it feels very literary, but I still think it's quite accessible and I cannot recommend it enough. It's absolutely gorgeous. You should read it. Next, I have a graphic novel because nonfiction comes in many different forms and that is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Technically, there are two books, but I read them in one and I just, ugh, it's, it's such an important book. In it, Spiegelman depicts his own relationship with his father and his father's story of surviving Auschwitz. In it, all Jews are depicted as mice, Nazis are depicted as cats, and I think like civilians are depicted as pigs. I think it's one of the most important books in recent memory. Obviously, just because of our current god awful political climate, I think it's a really important read. I think this should be just across the board mandatory reading. Next, I have From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doty. Doty is a mortician and like an educator about death and death practices. And this book examines death practices around the world. And it's fascinating. It has a very conversational tone, so it's really easy to read. It's really short. And Dodie's writing is really fun and funny despite the topic. I think this could very easily have gone into the realm of kind of like fetishization of other cultures, but it doesn't feel that way at all. It feels very respectful and well-researched and is just all around a great book. Again, very accessible, pretty conversational in tone. So if you don't want like dry, stodgy nonfiction, check this out. Plus the subject is just 
fascinating. Next, I have Shrill by Lindy West. This book is so funny. I think it's a great starting point for people who want to learn more about feminism. This is another memoir. I think I already said this, but I think memoirs are just a great place to start for nonfiction. In this, West talks about feminism, about her career, about living life as a fat woman, about reproductive rights and relationships and all of this good, wonderful stuff. And she is hilarious. So smart, so funny. I read the audiobook, which West narrates herself, and she has a background in comedy, so she just hits all of the beats so well. Oh, I adore this book. It's so good. And lastly, I have Behind the Beautiful Forever is by Catherine Boo. This reads like a novel, and I don't just mean like the writing's pretty. I mean, I gave this book to my mom, and she read the whole thing, and it wasn't until she got to the acknowledgments at the very end of the book that she realized that it was nonfiction and not actually a novel. It's so, so good. It follows several people whose lives are affected by like this violent act. I don't really want to spoil it. That happens in a slum outside of Mumbai. I think it's brilliant because it doesn't reduce the people that live in poverty to like tragedy porn. And it also combats the idea that like being poor is somehow like sanctifying, if that makes sense. I think a lot of times our depictions of poverty lack nuance. In trying to tell a story about what people have to overcome when they do live in poverty, they often ignore the fact that like, these are still human beings. They have all the complexities that someone who doesn't live in poverty has. And sometimes I think in trying to tell compelling stories about poverty, we erase that nuance, which is ultimately dehumanizing. So Boo avoids that, which is just great. I love this book so much. This book is so great. I can't recommend it enough. I think it's a great place to start with nonfiction. So that's it. Let me know if if you guys have any nonfiction recommendations down in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to see more of my face. You can find me on Twitter at possibly lit and on Instagram at possibly literate, and I will see you next time.